Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, welcome to my series of reviews of wines from Domi Bousquet. I reviewed several of their wines over the past few years. If this is your first time seeing any of my reviews of their wines, please check out the first video of this series about the Sauvignon Blanc. I covered the background of the winery and the region in that video. All right, let's just get into the stats of this wine. All right, so this is the 2019 Domaine Bousquet Reserve Pinot Noir. Suggested retail price is $18. From the Guateati Valley, Tupangato, Uco Valley, Mendoza, Argentina. It's 100% Pinot Noir, certified organic vineyard, made with organic grapes, hand harvested, 1,200 meters or 3,900 feet elevation. The soil is gravel and sand. It is aged in French oak for six to eight months. The ABV is 14.4%. 14 .4%. The TA is 4.95 grams per liter. The pH is 3.55. And the RS is only 1.58 grams per liter. All right. Okay, enough with the info. Let's get into the wine. I don't do a lot of Pinot Noir from Argentina. So I'm excited to check this one out. It's probably the last video of the night I'm going to do. I have five more wines, red wines to do. Um, mostly from Bousquet. I have a couple wines from Portugal. But it's getting kind of late. And I can finish this off tomorrow night. And then I go on a vacation. I'm not going anywhere. I wish I was going down there, Argentina. That'd be really cool. Hey, Bousquet, you want to sponsor a trip? That'd be awesome. Maybe not like right now. Maybe like next year. I don't want to do harvest though. Because I'm afraid of bees and wasps. And I know that all those, all those things are in the vineyard and I would be not good in the vineyard. But anyway. All right. I, I just kind of got lost in something here. All right. So typical Pinot Noir, as far as like we talked about color, um, it's, you know, really medium minus in the intensity of color. Uh, we do have, you know, a bit, you know, kind of a reddish color here. I wouldn't call it ruby. It actually kind of looks like a kind of a light cherry, which, you know, I know that cherry is the predominant flavor in Pinot Noir as in general, but you know, it's kind of a you know, light red. It kind of borders almost orange, but not really. And this is what vintage again? 19. So it's not shouldn't be oxidizing. You know, very little staining on the glass. Well, uh, I don't think I did tearing in the last wine, but you know, medium, medium plus. I mean, the 14.4. Yeah, okay. I've also been using a lot of wines in this, so there might be some residual on the side here too. So I would call it, I call it medium minus in the intensity of aromas, but it is youthful. Now that I stick my nose in it, you know, there's, there's that kind of a bright red cherry. I kind of feel like I get a little bit orange peel too. A little bit of cranberry, more dried in nature of the cranberry rather than um, the bright kind of ripe cherry. Get a little red hot, a little cinnamon going on here. There's a lot of red going on in this wine. Touch of baking spices. So, I mean, you know, the oak, the oak is doing its job imparting a little bit of uh, aroma too. Let's just get into the uh, palette here. Walks and talks like a Pinot, a little bit light. Dry, of course. I don't know if I've ever had a sweet Pinot Noir. But definitely dry. Um, the fruit still in that somewhat ripe stage. I wouldn't 
I wouldn't confuse this with a Burgundy or even a New Zealand. I might kind of go, oh, it might be a cool climate New World wine. You know, which New Zealand's cool climate, but in Tasmania is a really cool climate. But I would put this in a slightly warmer climate or a climate with more sunshine like this, where this is coming from. So I probably would put this like say cool climate California type of thing. So it's got enough. It's got enough ripeness of fruit. It's really cherry dominant, but you, I do get that. Or you do get a little bit of orange peel. There's a there's a touch. And I do mean a touch of coffee in this, probably from the oak barrels. Tannin is a little high. Now, I said. I've got some other wines that I use this class for, but it shouldn't be imparting tannin. Tannin's a little high. Now, that could be because of high elevation. Even though the color is right, it might be building up the tannin because high elevation, it's like I talked about, in the, I should have talked about in the first episode. I've talked about it in plenty of episodes in the past, that you get more phenol uh, components in the grape skins because it's like trying to protect the grapes from the UV rays. More UV rays, higher the altitude, or the higher the altitude, the more UV rays. So the tannin might be a little bit higher than than say what we would get, say Burgundy or Arizona, or not Arizona, uh, Oregon. <laughs> I don't know where Arizona came from, but it's smooth. It's easy to drink. It's light. It tastes good. Yeah, if you're, you know, if you're wanting to dig on some uh, Argentine Pinot Noir, I like it. Are there Pinot Noirs out there I like better? Yeah, but I think it's got some, some, some little uniqueness to it. That's why I like about it. It doesn't taste like anything else. It doesn't taste like Burgundy. It doesn't taste like Oregon. It doesn't taste like California necessarily. That's the closest I would do it, like Anderson Valley maybe Monterey, California Pinot Noir. Um, I think there's a, there's a little more strength to it, a little more structure to it with the tannin. A little more swagger to it, a little more rusticity to it. It's kind of like I'm Pinot Noir and I really don't care what you think about me, but I'm going to, I'm going to let it all hang out and you're gonna love me for it, and I think it's I think it's a good wine. Let's put it this way: I'm really going to enjoy this wine at some point in the future, with food especially, because I'm gonna to have to remember this is a wine I need. I can't just drink on its own, I, and I gotta have some really good food with this one. It's light in body, but the tannin is really kind of like, hey, let's talk. All right. So anyway, enough trying to be stupid and funny and silly it's a good one all right this is gonna do it for today's show uh, i want to thank my good friends again at creative palette kate and jane uh for supplying all these wines that they've been doing for me uh and their continued support of the show and if you enjoy what i'm doing here make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and tell you and then tell your friends until next time and check out some cool pinot noir from argentina <laughs>